Dynamic Multipoint VPNs. You may have heard of the term DM VPNs or Dynamic Multipoint VPNs, and in this micro nugget, we'll take a look together at why these are such an awesome technology, how they operate, and why they're so valuable to companies today. Let's jump in. To really appreciate and understand Dynamic Multipoint VPNs, let's use a business requirement. Let's say we have a headquarters site right here for Acme Incorporated, and they've got a server. We have a branch office, we'll call it branch office number one and branch office number two, and they've also got some servers. And these servers aren't for public consumption, they're just for the individual users of the company, regardless of what site they're at. Well, one thing we can do to get access to these servers is to have R2 build what's called a GRE tunnel between itself and the headquarters site. Maybe that's network 172.16.1.0, R3 could do the same thing. He could build a GRE tunnel. GRE simply stands for Generic Router Encapsulation. It's a way we can build a logical pipe across another network, such as the internet. And maybe this network is 192.168.1.0. And then we could have full access. So the customers here, let's say you have a happy user down here at branch one. If he wants to access server three, we'll call it, that traffic would be forwarded up the GRE tunnel to R1, R1 would send it down the GRE tunnel to R3, and the server would then respond in the reverse order like that. Now this GRE traffic that's going across the internet, the problem with that is it's not protected. What do you mean, Keith, it's not protected? It's not wearing a safety belt? It's not wearing a helmet? What do you mean? Well, I mean, if anybody on the internet, like a service provider who's moving those packets, is going to be able to see all the content of those packets. And that's why we'll traditionally use IPsec, IP security, to encrypt each and every packet before we send them over the network. So that's how we can get traffic across the network between multiple sites using GRE tunnels and protecting it with IPsec. But Keith, what about this dynamic multipoint VPN? What's that all about? Well, the problem that this solution that we're looking at has is that what if this user here wants to access that server there? It seems silly to have to go through the hub for all of that traffic. The solution with dynamic multipoint VPNs is that branch office one and branch office two, when they first join the internet and they want to build the GRE tunnels, instead of joining separate networks, they'll both join the same GRE network of let's say 10.40.1.0. Then they'll each report their IP addresses that they've received through DHCP or some other method up to the hub router. And if R2 needs to communicate and get to the 10.3 network, R2 can ask the hub and say, Dear Mr. Hub, what's the global address for R3? I'd like to talk to him. R1 responds, and then R2 can build a direct GRE connection, an IPsec connection between itself and R3, and we can cut out the middleman. So let's take a look at what we have with Dynamic Multipoint VPN, the solution as a whole. When devices come up on the internet, they're gonna go ahead and report to the hub for that company, reporting whatever the IP address they've been given. Again, an IP address could be given to that client, that router via DHCP or PPPoE, or it could even be a static address. Once we have both of these routers that have reported their IP address on the global interface, the one facing the internet, they'll also join the GRE network. So the common multipoint GRE network, and that would be some logical network like maybe 10.60.1.0, whatever you've configured, and they'll have direct connections between R2 and R1 and R3 and R1. However, if from a routing perspective, R2 ever needs to reach this 10.3 network or a server on that network, it's going to make a request through the protocol called Next Hop Resolution Protocol. R2 is going to say, you know what? I'd like to talk to R3 and build an IPsec tunnel directly to him. Mr. R1, could you give me the Next Hop, or the global address of R3? R1 feeds that to R2, and then R2 builds the Ike Phase 1 and Ike Phase 2 policies that are part of IPsec directly, and then we can use GRE traffic directly between R2 and R3. And that, my friends, is the high-level overview of how dynamic multipoint VPNs work. The beauty is that these remote devices don't have to have a static IP address. We could have 20 or 30 or 40 branch offices all pop up, report into the hub, and dynamically build tunnels between each of the branch offices 
all through the beauty of dynamic multipoint VPNs. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.